to humans ruining the earth. I think there's quite a, a few. It's a climate control over. film. <laughs> she's mother. She's mother nature, and she's, she's pissed. Yeah, she's mother nature. <laughs> Your feet oh, yeah. corrupt blood. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. If you're a Patreon member, you saw that we spun uh, last week and it landed on Eddie and it was a fantasy, if I remember right. So you picked Apostle from 2018, which is on Netflix. So Eddie, uh, why? <laughs> uh, so personally, I think Apostle is kind of a different movie. Um, I like the character development. I felt all the actors actually did a really solid job in it. And Martin Sheen um, does a really great job in it, in my opinion. So that's kind of why I went with it. I do agree. I do like Mar uh, Michael Sheen. Um, Michael Sheen. Yeah. Mike, not Martin. My fault. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've always been a big fan of Michael Sheen, so uh, he's a scene stealer for me. Um, so I thought he did a good job in here. The other guy uh, that I really liked in here, I think his name was Quinn in the movie. Um, yeah. Basically yeah. The, the ultimate bad guy. Yeah. The guy who's yeah. the same character in everything he's in. Is he? he he's like a, yeah. a priest gone bad and starts killing everybody oh, okay. because of you know his faith. What else was he in? He's in Outlander. He plays the same character. Okay. I it's, a TV, it's a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Never seen it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, if we can jump right in and kind of rip yeah. it apart a little bit. I, I did li did not like um, some of the overall pieces like they decided to, to go with. Like, um, I think that everything, story-wise, I think everything was placed purposefully. Right? Mm -hmm. But there were a couple of decisions that they made that I was kind of like, eh, I'm not really a big fan of that. But I did like their set design. I liked the um, I liked basically the the camera angles and whatnot that they chose. I mean, the, the production value on it uh, on it, I felt was was really pretty high. Um, the only thing that I really wasn't really crazy about was sort of the way that the characters interact in some of the scenes, especially um, Michael Sheen's character. It's hard to tell exactly what kind of character he is, um, which might be purposeful, too. I mean, I don't know. Well, yeah, I do think that is purposeful because when I was watching this, you know, you watch a lot of these cult religious movies and you're thinking, OK, the the head guy is yeah. it's all bullshit. He's bringing all these people for an ulterior motive and all that. One thing I did like about this movie is there is a payoff that it is all real. Yeah. You know, I, I actually yeah. didn't see that coming. I thought I thought it was going to be the typical, you know, this guy's all BS. He's doing all this for his own gain. He's doing this for money because of the whole ransom thing. So that led me down that path. Yeah, um, but yeah, you find out that no, the this island is legit. It is a religious it thing. It's going on a living thing because of some. All right, so what is what is this woman? Is she a witch? Is she a god? Is she just? So a... she's actually, in my opinion, I think yeah. she's actually a um, a victim of the island. I think that if if you think about this uh -huh. movie, so so this movie is based um really heavily in the idea that as humans we're fucked when it comes to cycles. Right. So if you look at what the three convicts, right, Quinn, Frank and Malcolm, what they mm -hmm. were running away from was a tyrannical government. Right. Mm, sure. They were essentially anarchists in the 1800s. Right. So that's what they were running away from. So they run away, they get away and, and they end up on this island. And basically, the first thing they do is kidnap the, the spirit of the island, this woman, and start force feeding her blood. And then they set up their own tyrannical government to where if anybody disagrees with them or goes against them, they murder them. <laughs> so the, irony, do. yeah, the irony of that is incredible. And then the same thing goes with the, with the religious aspect of it is like, they're going there and they're like, you know, well, we we're sort of our own gods here and they set themselves up. You, you know, they have the, the spirit, the, those spirit, um, the woman or whatever, but they're, that they set themselves mm -hmm. up to, to essentially be the only people that really know what's happening with the spirit which is the same way if you think about religion, right? Especially the Catholic religion, you know, you have to go through the priest to get to God. Well, especially the Mormon, you know, yeah, that too. Joseph yeah. Smith and the whole thing. Yeah. So, so there's, so there, there definitely, there are parallels with, uh, with the religious part of this to, you know, establish religions in our, in our current world, our, our world here. And again, they do the exact same thing. They corrupt the, the religion. And then you see that through Quinn, Quinn, even, you know, I, I thought the sim the symbolism that um, where Quinn, whenever he gets his neck cut by um, by the kid, by Joseph, he ends up donning that bandage. And because of the way the soaking of the blood is and the way his collar is on his jacket, he ends up looking like a priest. Mm -hmm. And then he's justifying his own his own actions and he's using his own, you know, I'm actually the speaker for, for our, our religion, etc. And that's why my all my actions are justified the same way they did with the um, the Spanish Inquisition. 
you know, and all and throughout history, all these different religious uh, events throughout history, they use the religion to justify their own barbaric actions. And I think that's I think that's what the film is going towards. Now, in terms of who the woman is at the end of the film, we see Thomas, who's basically dying. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm walks up to him and Thomas is laying on the ground. And as he's laying on the ground, his blood is hitting the ground and mm -hmm. the ground is starting to grab up and reach for him and actually yeah. he becomes, so he becomes the next spirit of the Island. Right. Which I think that was, that was something that it was almost like the, the woman was giving him the powers of the Island and yeah. like, I'm transferring well, all the power over to you because I want to be set free because I'm in a hell hole pretty much. I'm which held is, captive. Which is what I think. I think that essentially the island requires a a, a, a host. A, a host or a body, yeah. yeah, to basically use as the spirit, quote unquote, and then hmm. continuously be fed um <laughs> in whatever way to keep the island alive. Hmm. Yeah. Did did she specifically say that she was uh, transferring the power over to him? No, uh, she said. Okay. She said, "I've been waiting for you." Okay, yep. the, okay. So that's the line that made me think that this is all uh, like fate based. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think that right. he was fated to basically come to this island and and die for it and all that. Did that now? Why him? I don't know. I mean, I don't have like a good answer for that. It might go to his uh, his history with religion because he basically renounced his own god after what happened to him in Peking. So everybody else that's there has some faith in, in the Christian religion still, right? Well, They're yeah. still using Bibles and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't. He renounced his religion after Peking. He gave up. He doesn't think God exists, etc. So I think that's what she's waiting on. She's been waiting for someone that can become a God, quote unquote, because they don't believe in God. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I can buy that. Yeah. So how, how was she able to come out in the physical form and like drink everybody's blood that they that have they had in the jars outside? That's the part of the movie you have a problem with in terms of the spirituality of this. Well, well, I mean, she is bound to the she, she is, is bound, bound to the, to tree, the tree. So is it like is is she because oh, when she you know rose out of this swamp water or or you know crap water sewage water or whatever that I'm like uh, um is this the same chick or is this like we well, out of body experience her, or something and you see her a couple of times uh during the movie like when he first yeah. goes to church for the first time you see her walk by the window yeah. you see her uh he sees her in the the forest uh yeah, another... i thought i thought that was the uh sister at the very beginning because mm -hmm. he's uh, there to find his his sister and i thought okay she's she's actually dead like his sister's dead and she's now a ghost or something like oh, that that's what you were and thinking. And it, and yeah. she's like walking around these windows, and she's the actual one that's like, you know, causing all this stuff to happen. Yeah. Like the forest is living. So yeah, the, at that the whole point woman the... in the tree thing was a total, you know. Yeah, at that point in the movie, they haven't direction. revealed the 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 witch in the tree yet. So yeah, right. it's just some random woman that you don't know. And you don't really world. get to see facial, you know, structures or anything. You just see hair. You can tell it's it's similar. It, looks like a woman you know it's got but did you catch everything. whenever he goes outside the church you caught that the windows were like eight feet off the ground right yes yeah so and he was looking he was like how the in the world yeah. yeah yeah and then that's why that kind of solidified my thought of well, okay he just saw a ghost yeah. you know for a minute See, i don't think i don't think anyone else in the story sees her right outside the cabin i think she's only right. only presenting herself to him mm -hmm. to to get him like okay this you need to stay here and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this creepy thing to make you, <laughs> to, to make well, you go search for what this creepy thing is. And yeah. Well, Michael Sheen says that. You showed yourself to him. Why? He's not to be trusted. Yeah. I, I yeah, think I it's a, I think it's a projection. I and I think John's right. It's probably just in his head for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there was the part underneath the floorboards, whenever the blood, his blood drips down under the floorboards, she's like going nuts, licking yeah. it up, etc. So I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a, a straight projection, if it's completely in his mind, or if it's just she's mm -hmm. able to, at least in some part, send herself, send a part of herself, um, you know, force projection wise, Doctor Strange style outside <laughs> of outside of the body that she's trapped in. She has a bunch of Horcruxes. Yeah, I mean, if it, I mean, it, it would make sense if if we're if we're really gonna get to nuts and bolts of this thing. 
got to get down to the science, John. That exactly. That if she's part of the island, she's connected to it. Yeah, she can yeah. go. She, she can go, go anywhere. anywhere. She, she can yeah. go anywhere she wants. Yeah. Anywhere on so, the island, I guess. Yeah. If she's, right. Yeah. If she's yeah. one with the island. Which which is interesting to me too, by the way, being the one with the island thing. Like mm-hmm. I I think the reason and and this to me again is is a parallels thing that I think they do in this movie that the screenwriters did is I think the reason why the crops are dying and all that stuff is not just because she's unhappy. I think it's because they are corrupt. Their hearts are corrupt, et cetera. And as they feed her more of this blood, this corrupted blood, it's actually corrupting her, oh, interesting. which yeah. is then ruining the crops and ruining everything else. That's an interesting point of view. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not pure. It's not purest blood. It's like, yeah, you're like you're right. Yeah. Well, well yeah, they maybe they have the wrong blood. intentions of bringing everybody there. That's what that's... I was going to say. Their intentions are wrong. The people are coming there for the wrong reason. They're not coming there to to honor the island or to take care of it or anything like that. They're coming there because they want to run away or they want to they want to use it for their own adv- their own advantage. You know what I mean? And I think that could be why the, the It's a side story to humanity. Back. To humans ruining the earth. I think there's quite a, a few. It's a climate control over. film. <laughs> she's mother. She's mother nature, and she's, she's pissed. Yeah, she's mother nature, <laughs> and you're feeding oh, yeah. your corrupt blood. Yeah, I definitely think the mother earth part is super implied. Yeah, yeah, I think that's super implied. But um, well, getting off the wood witch for a minute. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, How much wood I, would a wood chick? <laughs> would, would, I can't even witch. say it once. <laughs> I did like the subplot between the uh, the two teenagers. Um, with raw, yeah, yeah, I like the whole. You know, nothing can be birthed, you know, without dying uh, on on the island and all that. So I I really like that subplot, and I kind of wish that would have been a little bit more central to the story, even though it kind of was. You know, it it was pretty central. Yeah. yeah. Ahead, See, to John. me, the, to me, the problem is the problem with this movie. I mean, now, granted, I, I I didn't hate it, didn't like it. I didn't like it, I didn't hate it. Right? It's 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 one of those lukewarm for me. Okay. Um. I think the movie loses sight of the the main plot with all these subplots going on. Cause there's a ton of subplots. There's no denying that. So there's you, three, I guess, right? Three subplots. Well, him I'm trying asking. to rescue his sister. The you've got him trying to rescue the sister. You've got, which is couple. supposed to be the main plot. That's what sells you on the movie. Yeah. You've got, you've got the, the priest trying to keep everything together. You've got Quinn trying to take over. You've got the priest's daughter trying to pr- pretend her, her dad is is perfectly fine and to help thomas you, okay. <laughs> you you have all this stuff going on and we leave the main story we leave the main character for at least 20 minutes in the middle of the film like he, he's nowhere to be seen because we have all these other subplots going on See, I don't, I don't know. I, I, the Quinn, the Quinn thing i don't see quinn trying to take over until after the subplot with the the teens is over and I think the main reason why Quinn went to that level was because the, the teens got pregnant and then he kills his daughter and then she turns around and then he turns around and frames well, Joseph for it. See, to me, the whole movie, I was I was noticing him in the background the whole movie. He was slowly burning oh, the so whole time. There, there yeah, was yeah. something percolating there. Um, oh, okay. Now, that being said, I do like the story. I really yeah. do. I like the story. I think it would be better as a novel oh, instead I'm sure of a movie. That, yeah. I'm sure if it was a novel, that'd be fantastic. It does seem more of a book. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, you know. most of these are are most of the films that we've watched that actually have, in my opinion, like a good amount of information in them mm-hmm. would lend themselves to being a good book. Well, the thing is, is I, I, it needs it needs more backstory of of the island. And I think that can only be happening. Uh, that can only happen in a book mm. like the details of how everything got to be it just kind of like oh these three guys were escaping great britain Mm -hmm. and here we are it's like they didn't really go you know in depth of how did they come up with the religion stuff how did they come up with all this you know how did they why did they want other people there if they're criminals from the state why did they want want people there to because no no ruler you can't be a ruler without slaves or servants, you know what I mean. So you can't you can't rule the island without bringing people there to serve you. But that's fine. Yeah. Let's can we talk about the uh, the filmmaking part of it then? Let's let's sure. figure out how do you guys feel on the filmmaking part. I thought it was great. I was hooked in the first fifteen seconds with that vast swooping camera shot of the, the mm-hmm. bridge over the water, and I mean just the vastness of it, and the mm-hmm. you could tell exactly what time period you were in. It set up that feeling. Yeah, it was a Harry Potter movie. train. 
you know that? Yeah, it it, it really was. It, it kind of <laughs> made you feel like you're you're in a you're in a fantasy world, but it's still grounded in reality. Because it was, uh, I mean, it's it was. I think it's out of Scotland, right? That's where they're kind of at. Because I mean, that train is actually in Scotland. I thought they were in England, but I don't know. Well, I mean, it's mm-hmm. well, they might have filmed north. in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The shot where they're coming up over the purification table, and the camera is like changing the angle like the, the camera's slowly coming up like this and it comes around to the side of Quinn and as you as they go kind of an over the shoulder canted angle from over Quinn's shoulder you see them uh the guards dragging up Joseph and and Thomas and everybody um that they just got in the cornfield you see them or wheat field you see them all being drug up from the side that was just a cool ass shot mm-hmm. I mean it was it was done really really well in my opinion and and just the the smoothness of the camera I, you know action etc and you get the weirdness of the purification table and like what the fuck is this for you know etc as they go over and then you see this is all going to be through Quinn's like you know super skewed version of of his own morality mm-hmm. at that point I don't know I just I, thought that was excellent I got dizzy yeah well i I, that that shot that you're talking about it kind of added it added confusion a confusion of going you know i've never seen these guys in hoods before i've never seen like any type of like ritual happen before Mm -hmm. and so your brain is is trying to look at everything else even the guy that had the mask the wood mask on he was in the background you see him yep yeah Mm -hmm. so it's like wait a minute the the monster the guardian monster it's like what's he doing here and everybody's just like well, don't mind him. He's just covered oh, that's in blood. Just Fred. Yeah. You know, he's the taker of the people. And mm, actually, okay. do, you know, do you know what his actual name is in the movie? No. He's the grinder. The, that's he, his name. Well, and apparently he's not. He's not a hundred percent. Like apparently he was brought as a child to the the wood witch and was given to the wood witch, and she basically like islandized him. So he's he's part human, but he's mostly island. It's really kind of weird, huh? Was that explained? No, it was. It was very briefly um, talked about by Malcolm. He says uh, we gave him to her. We gave her to him whenever he was young, and that was it. It was oh, like one line okay. in the whole fucking movie, and it was. Yeah, I, totally I don't know. I just that. think that's. Yeah, nuts. I must have missed that too. But yeah, yeah that nuts. that shot that you're talking about it it is that is a very nice shot because it does uh, those angles are supposed to add confusion. Yeah, and, and like and like suspense to your you know, yeah. it's supposed to make you feel it honestly john exactly what you said you felt that's what it's supposed to do it's supposed to make you feel like oh shit something's wrong yeah, like, yeah. this isn't no, gonna I go mean, good i, I, I was feeling. perfectly fine i was perfectly fine with the visual just straight on camera shot of this weird ass table <laughs> i'm i was fine with that i was just like okay all yeah. right i can't <laughs> I, can't. The, the, I gotta turn away the I audio did. production in that in that scene is fantastic too yeah and i did like that this was it did actually go more onto the fantasy route instead of oh let's just be a horror gore movie yeah because it could have easily gone to it to that way i mean yeah there were some some gory scenes but it wasn't just all like oh let's let's be saw in you know the pilgrim days that scene with joseph getting his head drilled is where everything in the movie actually like super shifts like you almost have two separate movies you've got like malcolm's version of the (laughs) island and then you have Quinn's version of the island. Because mm-hmm. once he gets messed up, once Joseph gets hurt or gets his, not hurt, <laughs> once he Killed. gets his head drilled, yeah. Uh, once he gets purified, the word that they use, the whole movie is, is almost is almost completely different after that. You know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, and again, I liked how they did that. It was it was done in a pretty seamless way, you know, we, without being like, see, hey, I, we're going different now, guys. See, I don't I don't particularly like that. I, I don't like movies where I, you lose sight of who the of the main character and and it switches i i just lost sight of it i yeah. maybe maybe i was watching it with a closed mind or or whatnot but i i did not halfway through the film it went it just went kind of went in a different direction of mm-hmm. okay we're gonna leave um thomas and we're gonna go to all these other things going on apostle this is your movie for fantasy what yep. are you scoring it so um, I'm going to give this a 7.5. Wow. Okay. okay. 7.5 for Eddie. That's, that's, that's been a really high point. score. Jaw up off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, what are you giving it? Um, After the movie was over, I'm like, well, okay. It could have been two hours shorter. could have been a 10-minute film. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it a 4.5. 
Okay, a four point five for Kyle John. Yeah, um, I, I did not see the movie that that Eddie saw. Um, I like I said, I think I was just closed off on it a, l- a little bit. I, maybe I'll watch it again and and change my mind. But for now, I'm giving it a four. Okay, a four for John. Um, no, it, I didn't think it was all that bad. Um, I thought it got a little bit slow in the middle, but I'm actually going to give it a, I'm going to give it a six and a half, actually. So that means Apostle from 2018 gets an average score of 5.6. Yeah. So, uh, if you are a Patreon member, you also saw that we <laughs> went ahead and John spun to, for his genre and, uh, you got, what was it? Mystery. I think it was. I got mystery. Yep. Yep. So what are you picking for mystery? I am going to pick Last Night in Soho from 2021, directed by Edgar Wright. Okay. All right. And remember, if you aren't a Patreon member, just go to patreon.com slash screenwrite. Um, you only see like a small portion of the video here on YouTube or um, out on the uh, interwebs of the podcasting sphere. Uh, but we basically talk for like an hour, an hour and a half about each movie. So um, if you want to hear all that discussion and some of the stuff that is maybe too racy for YouTube, maybe uh, that's all on Patreon. You can go there to, uh, to join one of those tiers. So with that, no further ado, we will be watching Last Night in Soho next Saturday. So thanks for watching.